Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. We are so glad you've tuned in to today's show. Holly, it's an exciting show, but... When, it is. When, we, when you were a kid, did you ever dream of uh, like going up in space? Because I know I did when, when I was a kid. But how about you? When we were kids, I was like, it was like, you can be an astronaut. You can be the president. You can be these things. And we were like, okay. I, I, when I was a kid, it wasn't like girls were astronauts. Uh -huh. So that was pretty much a guy thing. It really wasn't. <laughs> women didn't really dream about it. You oh. know, I wanted to be like the actress or the person on stage or whatever. Uh, but, it, but it was inspiring. I remember the first yeah. moon when they landed on the moon. I remember, I remember watching that and everyone was so enthralled mm -hmm. and how exciting that was. So space was has fun. always been exciting. But is that whole idea of becoming an astronaut only for, let's say, the high, you know, folks that go to major Ivy League colleges or something like only that? Only for or, really or smart people. For really, really smart, smart people. people. <laughs> Which but, wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I became a TV director instead. <laughs> exactly. I'm a film critic. Clearly, I'm not that in the category. So, yeah. But, but you know what? But let's, let's show the people what we're talking about, because this is going to be an amazing movie. Everyone needs to watch and see. All ages are going to enjoy this one. Well, yeah. We have a trailer to a movie that we just recently saw called A Million Miles Away, which is, of course, premiering on Amazon Prime. Uh, and you got a chance, which, by the way, I'm very jealous about. You got a chance to talk with the actual astronaut Yes. that the movie's about. So uh, we'll take a look at the trailer and then we'll come back and watch okay. your interview. And the with, director. And the director with Jose, the director. Jose Hernandez. Hey, Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the director of the movie. So let's take a look at the trailer and then we'll let's come see. back to you, all right? So what's your big goal, dream? I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> Oh my God, you're serious. Okay. I wanted this for almost 30 years. Ma, ¿por qué sirven las estrellas? Every decision I've made, I've made with the space program in mind. Who the hell are you? Uh, I'm Jose Hernandez, sir. I'm an engineer. You're the new guy, right? That third floor men's room needs toilet paper. Going to space, it's a stupid dream. Last 10 candidates were chosen from 12,962 applicants. It's never going to happen. Those people who got into the program, what do they have that you don't? They have skills that I don't have. It's taken them years to get where they are, but there's no guarantee. I know this is hard on everybody. My body hurts, I can't sleep. I know I can make this work. Over the last 10 years, I've applied to the space program 12 times and I've been on the verge of giving up after each and every rejection, but you know what, sir, here I am. So you could turn me down again, but rest assured, I'll be standing here again in a year. We grew up watching our people make sacrifices. It's on us now. Tenacity is a superpower. This may not be your future, but it will always be your past. Who better to leave this planet and dive into the unknown than a migrant farm worker? Not crying, are you, Bob? No, 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 no. Some dirt got into my eye. <laughs> How you doing, Holly? Fine, thank you. And listen, I loved this movie, and my co-host Isaac Hernandez loved the movie as well. We do a show called Faith on Film, and um, so I did the junket today, but he was wishing he could because. He said, I love this being, you know, coming from Hispanic heritage and being raised. He loved the values we both did that are in this film and how it showed having that dream. You can't just have a dream and you automatically get it. How you had to work for it and work for it to, to achieve what you wanted. What an inspirational story. I love this movie. Yes. And uh, what I love more about it is that our esteemed director, Alejandra Marcus Avella, she, um, she encapsulated uh, the fact that uh, it wasn't an effort by an individual. 
but it involved a family along the way. You know, first as a kid, my parents, you know, my educators, Miss Young. Later in life, it's my boss at Lawrence Livermore Lab, and it's my wife who makes that that yes. you know that life changing moment where she says, "What do they have that you don't have?" And I hadn't even thought of addressing that question. Once I addressed, I found out they were pilots scuba divers knew a third language and I went off and started acquiring those traits and thanks to her you know we were able to achieve and get selected after the uh the, our 12th attempt so uh, it was truly truly a community family uh affair in reaching our dream of becoming an astronaut and showing how important, like you said, your wife was, your teacher, your father, and the yes. tips that he gave you on what it would be to achieve your goal and what you would want. Um, what did you think of Michael Pena playing you? What did you think of seeing you on the big screen and seeing your life moments there? I think he did a, a masterful job at, uh, at at capturing, in essence, my, um, my personality. Because, uh, you know, I, I have humor in me, quite a bit of humor. And so uh, he, we met, it was during the pandemic, so we didn't meet in person. We, uh, we met in person on the set, but we didn't meet in person at the beginning. So we had several Zoom calls and he was able to ascertain what my personality was like and uh, and did a very, very good job at it. And uh, he also did a very good job at portraying the self-doubts I had along the way. Because uh, mm -hmm. we all doubt ourselves, especially when you dive into the unknown, uh, you know, you're 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 kind of afraid because you're saying, "What am I getting myself into? What am I going to be able to handle this?" And uh, and so he did a great job at dealing with those internal demons of saying, "Hey, uh, do I belong?" You know, that imposter syndrome that uh, I overcame and uh, and got selected and trained successfully, and then went on that mission. I read where you were in space for 14 days. Yes, and then you mm. came back on 9/11. Yes, I did. I today. Guess I did. today, I mean, today the in, importance uh, of this interview. Exactly, exactly. It was in 2009. So what is it, 14 years ago. Today, I was landing at Edwards Air Force Base at 4 p.m., 4 something p.m. We were oh landing. Gosh. So yeah, and, very important day. And you go back and you think, okay, 14 years ago I was doing that. And before that, 30 years ago, what were you doing? And 35, you know, I, I read where you said you were picking fruit and vegetables yeah. and little did you know you'd be in space. I mean, this is a dream that a lot of kids used to have. I hope kids will have it after they see this movie. Yeah, I, I hope I hope that this um, represents or this demonstrates that um, the American dream is alive and well. Yes. That all we have to do is we have to work for it. You know, there's a new concept. You know, you got to work hard. And if you're willing to work hard for it, you know, the American dream is alive and well, but let's let's work for it. But you have to work and be diligent. But the reward is so great. And now you pick fruit of a different kind, right? You have your own vineyard. You have yeah. a foundation. So you've really yes. picked skill sets and, and your position to other amazing uses for other people to achieve their dreams. Exactly. I um, after I left NASA, I became a motivational speaker. I wrote several books. Uh, and then I sort of came full circle uh, because you could take a kid out of the farm, but not the farm from the kids. So I bought my own vineyard. I operated with my father help, helping me because he knows how to operate a vineyard. And I didn't own, not only stop there, but I also uh, make my own wine. So under the Tira Luna Cellars label, uh, you, you too can have a wine made by an astronaut, which is the best tasting wine made by an astronaut because it's probably the only one but uh but it does taste out of this world carefully handpicked no less and yes. you have and you have a foundation quickly tell us what that foundation yes does. the foundation we preach the good gospel of of stem education we uh up and down the central valley of northern california uh we uh, have activities that expose our kids to stem careers science technology engineering and math we have a summer academy at the university of pacific where we have seventh through 12th graders spend five weeks every summer. So they see themselves in the campus, they get acclimated to a campus life environment, and uh, and hopefully they go into STEM careers. Well, I think this is a movie for, for sure. Children to adults, all ages are gonna enjoy this inspiring story. Jose, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Hello, Alejandra, hello. How, so wonderful to be with you. 
Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. I loved this movie. And my co-host, Isaac Hernandez, loved the movie as well. And we felt like it was... Um, it encapsulated so much of not just telling a, an interesting story about someone's life and what they did, but capturing all the elements that were in it, his family, his teacher, his mother. Why did you take on this project? Was it something you had to fight to direct or was it yours from the beginning? No, I had to fight. I had to fight. <laughs> and it was such, an, such a privilege to have Jose's story in front of me because, of course, I had the inspiration coming from the material itself. So I kept saying, if Jose crossed the NASA doors and entered, you know, into that uh, impossible space, I, I can do it with the studio system. <laughs> so see, it was a story of your overcoming as well as his overcoming, right? To achieve your dream. Yeah, yeah, completely. It was completely like that. Okay, Michael Pena, I loved him. What a great actor to portray Jose. I felt he was so good in the role and Rosa Salazar and the whole cast. Uh, did you, were you pleased with who they cast for you to work with? I loved them, I loved them. I think they were perfect. I really wanted actual Mexican Americans or Peruvian Americans to, you know, to portray the, the couple. And I think they just liked the film with their performances. What is it, what, do you have a favorite scene that you directed or one of those that you just were, you loved it when you walked by, you went, I love it, that was it. I love, I love the car dealership scene. I love the primos scene. I love the menacing cholo primos scene. That, that, those two I really, I really cherish. You really cherish. And don't you feel this is a film for all ages, really? Young who dream of being an astronaut, or used to anyway, I hope this inspires other young people to dream to, to, uh, to like be an astronaut if they want, to the very older to sing, if you have an idea, go for it. I think this inspires all ages, don't you? Completely, I agree. I think that this, this film should be watched in a family, you know, in a family room with a family as, as Mexicans like to do. <laughs> All cuddled up in the same room watching TV. That's, that's, a, that's an advice of how people should watch this film. You know, I felt it interesting that Jose returned from space on 9-11. And today is 9-11. I mean, how profound that he's doing interviews about his movie and his life on the very day that he re returned from space. I know that that's a that's a nice uh, coincidence. Okay, in Variety magazine in 2019 voted you the top 10 directors to watch. Did that put any pressure on you as far as your career or did that encourage you and inspire you to do even more? I was so happy when that came out, but I I don't take myself that seriously. I didn't also I didn't mean you know, it didn't pressure me because I just I just kept doing what I do and, and being myself. And I think that's that's it. You have to not believe everything people say about you, even the good stuff. <laughs> well, even, even the good stuff. Well, I think there's certainly a lot of things. This is this is a wonderful film. I mean, this is a family film that they can watch over and over. And, you know, we are seeing more and more. Uh, characters, uh, films come out with Hispanic characters and but and directors even. But um, you know, any words that you would like to encourage your young viewing audience, no matter where, what background or where they come from, as far as watching this film. Yes, I would say you have to trust yourselves and you have to be confident because it's fine. You with who you are, you're complete. You have everything you need inside you, and it's just a matter of bringing that out, and and you'll find your power. All right, what are you excited to work on next? Is there anything that you've got ready to work on whenever the everything the strike gets over and everything gets back to normal? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna do some TV, I guess, and then and then I, I would love to come back to film. Alejandro, you are a beautiful director, a beautiful woman, and I love what you did with this beautiful film. Thank you so much. You. Well, Isaac, I'm pretty sure with the last name Hernandez, you love this movie and the I did. story. Didn't you uh, love Jose? Wasn't I, he the coolest guy ever? I love I'm, him. I'm thinking he might be a distant cousin. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure you want him to be. Yeah. He's the one. 
And it's amazing how he's in that field picking vegetables, fruits, you know, right. crossing over into the U.S., you know, working for minimum wage that he would even dream of being an astronaut. And I love, like he said, I love the scene with his wife when he says, what is it? She goes, what do these guys have that you don't have? I love that he realized, right. well, well, yeah, they're doing things that I'm not doing. And then he went back again. And people will see in this movie, this is a story of overcoming. This is a story of overcoming racist prejudice. And not even racist, but presidential things. For instance, when he walks up to get a key because he's an engineer at this company to go do something with an engineer, she gives him the whole, the girl gives him the whole ring of keys and says, you can start cleaning the bathrooms and da, 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 assuming he's the janitor. So there's little subtle things in there that he had to overcome as well as just going for things in life. And what I really love, Isaac, is the fact that the whole message of this film is family, teachers. It wasn't just yeah. one. It was a village um, that his that his teacher did, his wife, how she encouraged him. And that it's not about, well, I want to do that so it's easy. I want to do that so everyone wins a prize, everyone wins a token. No. This is something he wanted and he had to work for it. And God blessed him and yeah. gave him that dream. But he worked for it. He did something for it. You don't just sit around and go, Correct. oh, God, okay, hopefully my dream will become true. And then, you know. No, you have to do what it takes to be that whatever it is you want to be. No, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And, and it really resonates with me because the way I became a director, a TV director was actually, it didn't just happen like, hey, uh, let me just go and be a director. As I, as I started to volunteer, by the way, so here's the first part. I volunteered. I didn't expect yeah. to get a job without knowing yes. what I was doing. I volunteered and that's how I learned. And then I remember that when people would go to lunch after I did get hired, um, people would go to lunch. I would go into the director's booth and start messing with the console, which is a lot of buttons and knobs and, you know, things. And I would, you know, while everybody's out there enjoying their lunch, I'm in there working at it. I'm learning. Yes. And when I finally felt, hey, yes. I'm comfortable enough, I said, hey, you all need a Spanish director because that's the other thing. I spoke Spanish and they had some Spanish shows with yes. no Spanish director. So I said, I can, you know, the guy says, well, do you know one? I said, yeah, me. But it took, <laughs> it took me giving of my time and, and yep. working at it. And volunteer. Did you know that Jose Hernandez was the first astronaut to text Spanish in space? So he was the first Spanish speaking from space astronaut that we've had. And I think people saw in the interview, I thought it was a profound that he came back on 9-11. I thought that was profound. Yeah. And then I did the interview that day. I, for some reason, that really, and then but, the director, Alejandra, she was precious. You know, she's, but yeah. as far as uh, Vanity Fair and people watching her directing, she's really up and coming. And she said she felt she knew the culture. Isn't it interesting, Isaac, that we saw the, um, was it the Flame and Hot movie recently that was right. about the guy who'd been the Cheetos? We're seeing real true stories with Hispanic cultures and characters. Um, even the new, what was it, DC or Marvel movie that came out? That's I mean, right. we're Blue Beetle. We're seeing these come out more and more, which I think is very interesting. Well, of course, me as a Hispanic myself, I find that very uh, encouraging, you know, to know. Because, yes. You know, I, I've been watching TV, of course, since I was a kid, and I remember all the Hispanic characters were always either the the uh, the gardeners or the, the you know the the bus boys or just some of those. And I'm not demeaning those jobs, by the way. I mean, somebody has to do those right. jobs. But it was never you know the Hispanic was never the attorney or or the uh, astronaut. Or in, or in cartoons, it was, always it was those. Pepe Gonz In it cartoons, was... <laughs> it was Pepe Gonzalez. <laughs> or the what's the guy yes. around Speedy Gonzalez? Speedy or Gonzalez. Was, yeah. Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. yeah. Ah, arriba, yeah. arriba, arriba. Yeah. You did it great. You did it great. Okay. And then talking about your story, my story. I mean, I love to do acting, and I was doing commercials mm -hmm. in front of the camera. But I remember my uh, neighbor friend of I had a production studio, and I said, you know, I I, I love doing ha ha snack pack and pampers and commercials like that, but I want to know what goes on behind the camera. And he goes, well, you can come, you know, apprentice for free and sit down on shoots. I said, okay. So I literally used my own time to go see what it did to be a script continuity, what it was to be a set dresser, what was it to be the food prep, what every position I learned and studied so that I knew what went on behind the camera. And then that led into me doing movie reviews because there was a need and no one was doing it. And I had two little ones. The PG-13 just came out. So I started writing movie reviews. And then I went to a bigger paper and said, well, would you be interested? And I was a mom and they didn't have that before. So it's how God opened doors. But it was that initial me learning when I'm watching a movie. I, I watch very differently. I watch what language is being done, how it's shot, how it's filmed. And you, Isaac, you know, because you're a producer, too, you look for different things other than, oh, I just saw a movie. You're taking 
it all in because we've been trained to do it. Yeah. So again, it's God, like he just led Jose, it's God leading us into the yeah. ultimate to find our gift and our giftings and what our hearts desire. But we did things to work to get here to do it. Yeah. And uh, by the way, my wife used to hate when we'd watch movies because I would, I would go, oh, that was a bad cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, did you hear that? You know, and so that was occupational hazard. Um, but, I see you know, the mic hanging down. The mic reflection. Yeah. I see the mic hanging. I'm like, yes, oh my god. Yes. Now, or, or looking when the car drives by and you're looking for the reflection of the guy shooting it. All kinds of things. Reflection. Yeah. And, and most people won't notice that, but because we just have that gifting, I guess we can pick up on those things. And again, yes. it just used to drive my wife crazy. Uh, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to harp on young people, but. That's something that I think has been lost now. It's almost like these young people don't really want to put in the time, don't want to put in the effort. They just want it to show up. I, I saw a Facebook post recently where somebody was you know, saying that they, uh, if they get hired, that they would want to have all these break, that if they don't want to show up to work, it's okay not to show up to work. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just... Eh. Well, I think, you know, God gave us work. I mean, he he created for six days. He rested on the seventh. But he created. He worked. Mm -hmm. From the beginning of time, we've seen God work and do things. He tells us how it's good and healthy for us to do things. I think with the pandemic and, of course, you know, not to get too conspiracy, but some things that happened government-wise shut down people's desire to work shut down people's desire to get out there and and stay in that let's you know let's work together to make things happen whether it's working in a restaurant whether it's working in a, as a mechanic in a garage whether, no matter what you're doing you know being proud of what you do and i think some of that was lost and i agree with you i think there's a younger generation that just doesn't appreciate that the work ethic that we're talking about and right. having a dream and what it takes to go for it mm -hmm. so many people are like oh i dreamed of doing this or i dreamed of doing that and okay, you dreamed of it, but just because you dreamed it doesn't, doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's steps and things, and that's what this movie does. Yes. It shows the teacher that looked at young Jose and said, you're good with numbers, and mm -hmm. she would call on him, and she said, "You're." He, she recognized the gift and went to the parents and said, he's got a gift. You know, don't let this, he's got a gift. He's good with this. It was the, you know, fellow co-workers. It was the people. He went for 12 times to turn in his thing to NASA. And on the 12th, I love it. You'll see in the commercial, he goes up to the guy and he hands it to him. And the guy goes, well, you know, you've been here 11 times before. We've had this 11 times before. And he goes, yeah, and if you don't choose me, I'll be back. I mean, he <laughs> wasn't going to give up. There you go. And, see? You know, it's that spirit. And I think God really. Yeah. And that's why I love to his interview about him saying, well, and after as an astronaut, I you know own a winery. I'm making wine. I started a foundation to help kids and mothers and people. He used that aunt to go do things for the Lord and help with his giftings, and I yeah. love that too. Yeah, and but now I'm going to harp on the parents a little bit because yes. another thing that we saw in this movie was that, again, the adults, the parents, and then the teacher, like you said, but the parents really kind of encouraged him to follow that dream. Now, at first, if I remember correctly in the movie, at first the dad said, look, we are migrant farm workers, and that's what we do. But when they saw that this kid really did have a dream, they... they pursued a, they, they pushed him into that dream they helped him they, they encouraged him and I, I do have I, I totally uh, can relate to that because I had the same thing my, my parents were very um, just very uh, encouraging to yes. whatever I wanted to do that was my dream and, and of course I, I did say that you know I want to be an astronaut but I didn't really I just thought that was fun but from from <laughs> the, from, <laughs> from a kid I wanted to be somehow in the entertainment world, whether it be, uh, you know, re uh, music or, or acting or, or filmmaking or TV. And I remember at, at the age of 16, I, I'm a musician at the age of 16. I said, Dad, I want to have my, rec my own recording studio. He yes. went and took the garage and he built me a recording studio at age yeah. 16. So that was kind of a, a, a big push for me to be immersed. I had totally immersed myself in this. And so yes. it's very important for parents to be involved in, in, uh, in their kids' dreams and uh, help them in whatever they need to fulfill those dreams. There, I loved was, acting. That was my I loved rent. Being, <laughs> I loved acting. I loved being in front of the camera. My parents it, uh, let me join a drama class, a separate, mm -hmm. you know, where you go and take the lessons out of school. Mm -hmm. And they paid for me to do that. And that was a big expense on their part because they didn't have a lot of money with four girls to do that. But that was a sacrifice that they made to let me have part of my dream and see that. And in the end, it paid off because mm -hmm. in the end, that's what I did. 
you know, and I love the fact that the father said there's five things to do. Now, we're not going to tell you folks what those five things are, because I want you to watch the movie movie. and hear what those five things were. But that was his ingredient of success is what his dad said. Okay, if you really want to do this and fulfill your dream, here's how you're going to get there. And so he lay down. And when the son said it was hard, he goes, I know, but that's what you got to do to make it happen. So, again, I agree with you. Parents have to really go in and support. It may not, the kid's dream may not be what you think your child is going to ultimately do. And it may not even be your dream, but don't squelch the Holy Spirit. Don't squelch what God is birthing in that person. You know, if he loves to um, play army when he's a kid and play for things, he Mm -hmm. may grow up to be in the military and be an amazing Mm -hmm. hero or leader. You know, my son would always stir fires around the campfire. He was two years old. He would stir fires. And all he wanted to do was build fires with my husband and his dad. And and when we go on camping trips from two, three, four, he entered, wanted to be a fireman. I took him to the fire training in high school and, and, and weekly took him there. He ended up being a firefighter paramedic. But from two years old, that's what he yeah. wanted to do. So you just have to encourage your children. And like you said, really be yeah. there to coach them along mm-hmm. the way. Interesting that you said military, because of course, you know, my son uh, went into the military. I always wanted him to go into TV production. I mean, obviously, yes. you know, and, and yes. in fact, he did. And he ended up running a running a, a, a camera that pays very well in Hollywood. And he ended up actually getting some work in Hollywood. He got work at TVN. But then because of a brother I have in Hollywood, he got some work there. And then all of a sudden he comes to us one day and says, I'm joining the army. And, you know, I mean, my, my wife is the one that told me I was away. She called me up crying, wanted me to talk him out of it. So I went home when I got home and I, I tried to talk him out of it. And I realized there's no way this is his dream. Thinking, you know, looking back, I, I said, no wonder he was always out there playing paintball. Yes. I mean, he yes. had that since he was a kid. So yes. uh, we we changed our our, uh, our way of thinking and we're, we became very supportive. Oh, my goodness. My wife even has almost like a shrine to him. He's got all, she's got this area with all pictures of him in his military stuff. Because so. you're proud. She's proud. We and are that's very what much. this movie and that's what this movie, folks, mm-hmm. a million miles away. Yes. You've heard us talk about how it inspired us. You've heard us say how it will be important to kids, teens, and adults. Yeah. I would encourage maybe not your little toddlers, not them. They won't stay with the story. But this is a good movie for good older movie. children to tweens yes. to teens to adults. That's Watch right. it as a family. Talk about it after. I'm telling you, even though I knew the ending, I was so inspired all the I way know. through. It really will encourage and inspire you. Well, definitely watch it. It's available on Amazon Prime. Uh, yes. if, if you're watching this show when it first comes out, it just came out. If you're watching it months later, it'll be there. Get out there and watch it. Uh, Holly, we've pretty much run out of time again. Uh, we just want to encourage people to go to our YouTube channel, by the way, and yes. subscribe. And not only subscribe, but hit that little Uh, the little bell. That way you'll get notified on when new shows come out, which are every week. And I would love to hear from someone who goes to see this movie. Please, you know, make in the comments on our social media page and let us know how you liked it. I would love to know if you liked this movie and enjoyed this movie as much as we do. A million miles away. Go support it. A million miles away. All right, Holly, we'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye now. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.